Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Emily Edison, Executive Director of SOAR Careers. Emily has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. Thank you, Emily, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Talk about the work of SOAR Careers. Sure. Um, well, our mission is to inspire personal transformation through career development. Um, we um, help support people where they're at and whatever their transformation looks like, uh, we help work with them to get to that point. And that's important, right? Where they're at, meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. There's not a, 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 a barrier to entry that requires people to go through hoops and, and figure things out and so on. You're going to actually help them through the process of providing a service to figure themselves out as well. That's correct, and it could be anywhere from someone or an individual returning back from incarceration mm -hmm. to someone who experienced a divorce or they're now um, taking care and have to have a job on their own um, to someone who um, has just been out of the workforce and might need a little bit more assistance or help. So we help people navigate those systems um, and really focus on the individualized approach because a job that um, I think might be good for you might not be what you want to do. And so we really work with the individual through assessments, um, learning style assessments, career assessments, um, communication style assessments. And through all of that and our workshops that we have, we really do a lot of one-on-one -on -one support with folks. So it's men and women, yep. people of different ages, people with different needs, people with different backgrounds. In terms of, of the number of people that you serve on an annual basis, mm -hmm. how does that look? We serve roughly five, well, I know this, 575 this year, this past fiscal year, mm -hmm. um, and that fluctuates. Um, I started when um, in 2012 and we had 800 folks that we were working with, and now we're down to 500, some plus. What we're seeing are people um, need a, a little bit more assistance to figure out where they wanna go. Um, and so we're seeing less numbers, but the need is increased in the individuals that we're working with. So what you're not trying to do is to provide a stopgap job um, in order to uh, drive up numbers or to talk about how many people you're serving. You've basically gone through a process in which you found that the type of services that you need to deliver have to have a longer span with more support. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Um, you know, it takes a lot for an individual or any one of us to, if, if you're kind of swimming around and where you're gonna go, um, it takes a little bit to figure it out. Um, some people it might take a month because they know what they're going to do. They walk in, they just want a resume, they just want a cover letter, they found the job that they want. And some people might not know what that is. And so really we're doing a lot of self-reflection self work. Um, a lot of the issues that we're seeing too are when, when folks are living in poverty or they've dealt with experiences in the past that have not allowed them to get a job right away, that you don't have self-confidence. And if, if you're going out to get a job, you need to sell yourself. And so those two are conflicting, right? So we do a lot of work with folks to, um, you know, figure that out um, and do self positive talk, self affirmations. Um, a lot of people don't realize that things they've done in the past or maybe they did at home are transferable skills that could be used out in uh, at a place of employment. And also, some of the things that they might have done in the past uh, might be bad habits that actually don't translate and could could hurt their chances of finding a new uh, new role. Before you get into the actual job training piece, mm -hmm. how do you deal with 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 that piece so that somebody can come uh, come and and present themselves in a way? with some confidence and knowledge? Well, it's all about looking at the different fields of work you're going into because, and I always use this example because it's a very easy example. Um, if you have facial tattoos, mm -hmm. um, applying for a receptionist job at a law office might, it just might not work. Might not it might work. not be a good fit. Right. Um, but working at a tattoo parlor or maybe a, uh, some place that would be more accepting of it. So really it's looking at um, 
there are limitations. There are going to be some barriers. Um, if you don't know Spanish, but the job requires Spanish, that's a barrier. So you know you don't apply for those types of positions. Right. If you have to, if you have to deal with with uh, reading and your reading level is not where it needs to be. Correct. Then we work with someone and we make referrals and say, hey, there's a really great adult basic education program in town. Um, they could help you brush up on those skills. We know that you need to be at a eighth grade level if you want to enter right. into college or go into. So those, I mean, it's really dissecting once again the individual and just realizing and recognizing that wherever you came from in the past, honoring that. And that gives you a lot of skills that you might not even know that they're skills. You've, you've viewed them as a deficit, but they might be more of a positive. And so, so working on that with folks to see that. So you're, you're coming to them as a consultant mm -hmm. to help them navigate. They're, they're doing the navigation. They're making all the decisions. But you're basically saying, okay, if you want to go in this direction, here are the barriers you might face. Yep. You're not saying you can't do it. You're just saying, you know, facial tattoos might not work in a law office, or they might. Yep. Right. And and uh, if if you need to brush up on language skills or whatever, you're you're providing that. Um, what happens when you get to that point where I know that I want to work in a restaurant? How do you help me find a job now? So it depends on, first we look at, do you have skills to do those types of jobs? And so uh, if we look at waitressing um, or serving or in the service industry, um, you help the person understand what that job would entail. Right. So um, you're gonna have to be on your feet. You will have to be personable. This is what is expected. You have to and deal with complaints. You have to deal with complaints. And then we work with someone to say, this is what the job is gonna entail. Um, and then we really help you develop your resume at that point and, um, or cover letter, whatever they require. And then we practice with you doing mock interviews so that your nerves are down. You've, you can speak about yourself. You can be proud about what your accomplishments are. And really a lot of um, what we do too is if you have an absence of um, work history, two to three years, whether it's because you were incarcerated or you were in a treatment facility, whatever that reason may be, we help you answer that question. How do you answer that question? If I, if I have been away, mm -hmm. um, I've been away for assault and battery. Yep. Um, and it, it becomes evident. How do you have me explain that in a way that that could create some understanding. Well, you take accountability for your past actions. Um, and in that case, if you served time in the criminal justice system or incarcerated, um, you've done what you've needed to do to serve out your sentence, right? Um, but it's about taking accountability for what you've done in the past. And so answering that straight up, yes, I, I have, I, I do have that charge. The circumstances around that were when I was 21 years old and I did X, Y, and Z. And what I've done since then though, is when I was incarcerated, I took my, I finished my GED or I took training to do, um, get specialized in skills. And I really used that time to better myself. Um, and now that I'm out, I'm also utilizing services um, that are helping me with my anger issues. So it's Just about- Just using that as an example. It's about confronting truth. Truth, yep. But then sharing that truth, which is very intimidating. Without you, oversharing. Without oversharing. <laughs> that's that. Well, well, well exactly. Um, talk a little bit about oversharing. What, what, what does that look like when, when someone overshares? Um, when you get into too many details, because really it doesn't matter. Right. Right. And so if we're looking at someone who's committed a crime, that's the fact. A crime was committed. Um, the person got sentenced, they served their time, and they've done what they've needed to do. Yep. Um, and so there's no need to really go into any details like, oh, you know, I was in this really bad time in my life and I was hanging out with so-and-so and then this happened. It, that doesn't matter. It's, it's about looking at your past, seeing what it is and what you've done or what has been done and moving forward and making a plan. Now, you also have a new program called the Transitional 
employment pilot project. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. It's it now it's it's just a pilot. So it is just a pilot. Yep. Um, so we collaborate closely with um, other partners in the in the community, other workforce partners, and um, in the past we had a. Uh, project that was for Opportunity Youth, and it was called Opportunity Youth of Duluth. Um, Opportunity Youth are ages 16 to 24 who um, might be involved in the um, criminal justice system, might be currently homeless, involved in foster care, um, disengaged from school. Um, and so through our partner agency um, and, and our partnership, we developed a program, a career pathways program for the, this youth. And out of that, we saw that there was a gap in the services we were providing because um, we were looking at youth jumping too quickly from one project, one transitional employment project that was on site at a local agency making candles, a social entrepreneurial site, um, to getting a real job and jumping in. And we saw that there's a transition period so we've been working with the hospitality industry, different hotels in the area, and travel and tourism is a huge industry up here. Um, and through that, we are developing how um, we can provide a job coach um, while youth are getting probationary, working at a hotel on a probationary period. And then we work with the youth and the um, supervisor at the site to help address any issues that might come up. So this basically helps to um, to smooth the way to a full a full job, a full-time employment. Correct. And and a lot of it is the you know the term soft skills. Right. So it's showing up on time, um, not being on a cell phone. Um, when you're at work, you're at work. How do you communicate? Smiling. Um, smiling. You're in a customer service. So if any of those things would come up, and we haven't started it yet, so, which is exciting, we're developing it, but um, if any of those things come up, it's not an immediate termination. It's a, wow, maybe they didn't know you needed to smile. Maybe yes. this is a learning opportunity. And um, that's what we're finding is a lot of folks might not have just been taught. Emily Edison, thank you so much for sharing the work of SOAR Careers, how you help people navigate their independence and, and their workforce uh, journey. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.